And now, here's our host, Chris Arnson. Good afternoon, Long Island, New York, Connecticut, and those listening internationally over the Internet. This is Chris Arns and your host of Iron Sharpens Iron. Today we're going to be uh, addressing the theme, Has Mysticism Crept into the Evangelical Church? And to define mysticism and to discuss uh, this phenomena in evangelicalism, uh, we have Ken Silva, the director of Apprising Ministries, and the general editor of the Christian Research Network, in addition to being pastor of Connecticut River Baptist Church, which is a Southern Baptist congregation in Claremont, New Hampshire. Uh, well, as I was saying before, we're going to be talking about mysticism in the modern evangelical church, and to discuss this is Ken Silva. It's my honor and privilege uh, to have you for the very first time on Iron Sharp and Iron, Ken. Well, the Lord be praised. It's nice to be here, Chris. Yeah, well, before we even go into the discussion at hand on mysticism, uh, tell us something about uh, Prizing Ministries and also the Christian Research Network. Well, Christian Research Network was something actually begun by Ingrid Leader, who is uh, also known for Slice of Laodicea across Talk America from the VCY America Network. And uh, what essentially it is is a number of contributors at, at CRN which try to do some research but also bring information on various aspects of Christianity, kind of an aggregate source that brings a lot of teachings together. Uh, Prizing Ministries is actually a fully integrated auxiliary outreach of Connecticut River Baptist Church and uh, started about three years ago. And uh, since then, the Lord just opened the door, so I'm talking with folks like yourself. Great, and I was so delighted to hear that uh, you are a, a mutual friend of Steve Camp, the theologically reformed apologist and Christian recording artist. Yes, well, yes, I, I, I do know Steve, and I'm privileged that he's actually a contributor with CRN, as a matter of fact. Yes, uh, so tell us about the uh, theological makeup of Connecticut River Baptist Church. Well, we're affiliated with the Southern Baptist Convention, and um, we'd be more on the reform side of what would be going on in the, in the Southern Baptist Convention. We're not exactly... Um, too close to the organization right now because uh, some of the stances I take seem to differ, especially in the area of mysticism and uh, the purpose-driven life, mm -hmm. which I have exceptions with uh, both. Yes. But um, what we essentially are trying to do is um, it's, a, it's a home fellowship, and we really are reaching a lot more people internationally through the Internet. It's kind of an amazing thing what God did there. Hmm. All right. Well, the, the topic at hand is Eastern... Uh, mysticism, if you could, def uh, not Eastern mysticism, I'm sorry, but oh, it's the same thing. Yeah, mysticism and uh, and uh, how it has crept into evangelical Christianity. If you could define uh, mysticism for our audience. All right. Uh, mysticism is a huge term, and I think the best working definition we should use would be kind of a combination of what classic mysticism would be and what you refer to as Eastern mysticism slash so called Christian mysticism and I put Christians in quote there. Essentially what we're, we're talking about is mysticism is what people are trying to do to get a union with God. Mm -hmm. You'll see it uh, referred to as personal union with God. You'll see it referred to sometimes in Latin, unio mystica. And essentially, as Dr. MacArthur defines it, the, the mystic is using their a subjective, personal approach to God basically in a, in, you know, for shewing and, and disdaining rational thought, saying that, well, you can't really understand God rationally, so therefore we have to go inside ourselves and have a mystical union with him. That would be a good working definition. Hmm. Uh, does this violate the one of the pillars of the Reformation, Sola Scriptura, in your opinion? That is the heart of it right there, brother, is the fact that um, the Bible is not... The, the, although the mystic will not say this, they will not use these words, I've been studying this from a number of different aspects over the past four or five years, you'll find that they, they do not say that the Bible is not sufficient, but their practice shows it. And that's my exact... As a matter of fact, that's my problem with Rick Warren. While he'll say he believes Sola Scriptura, what he teaches doesn't line up with that. And he also is lightly involved in the same kind of mysticism. It's basically a throwback to neo-Orthodoxy. Mm where if you remember Karl Barth taught that the scripture becomes the word of God. Mm -hmm. It's not the word of God until God makes it, which is sort of right, but essentially you could sum it up by saying they the wrong approach to scripture is the Bible is a divine mailbox where we receive communication from heaven. 
Dr. Walter Martin was right when he said, no, the Bible is the message from heaven. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it is a repudiation of Sola Scriptura. Now, um, mysticism has been a part of the Roman Catholic Church and other uh, mainline denominations for years. How far back can you trace uh, the entrance of mysticism into evangelicalism? Well, being a former Roman Catholic, I'm glad that you brought that out. I'm also friends with Richard Bennett, who I know uh, yes. does a promotion for your show as well. Yes. And Richard, as a former Catholic uh, priest for 22 years over in Trinidad, we can see that the myst mystical aspect and, and the, the experiences are real. And you can trace it into the evangelical church. You kind of don't see it in the evangelical mainstream as you see it now until the emerging church starts about 1997. Mm. That's how it kind of gets into the door of, of uh, the evangelical church. You can trace it back further to that. You'll see it in the mainline denominations, what Dr. Walter Martin referred to as the cult of liberal theology brought that in. Mm -hmm. And we're talking, the, you know, the uh, congregational church, most of the Anglican church. You can see they're all battling now over issues with homosexuality and ordaining, you know, gay priests that are practicing uh, their sin. And the reason for that is they've kicked out Sola Scriptura, and they're going by this mystical meditation, like, oh, there's a deception that comes with it, that they believe in a false sense of God's love. And... And that's exactly what you do. You trace it back. You can trace this all the way back through the Roman Catholic Church, the medieval monks. And uh, it really flowered in the anti-biblical monastic tradition. That's where this mysticism flowered. Mm -hmm. Would you say, uh, before we even get into uh, the emergent church and so forth, would you say that uh, mysticism was a part of the uh, worship and life of the charismatic movement and, and mainline Pentecostal denominations in some form? Well, I think that's actually a connection that can be made, and I don't want to, you know, speak badly of charismatic and Pentecostals per se. I've been in both of those traditions myself mm -hmm. and have been led away from that. That's my own personal experience. That's another issue. But I think when you when you deal with, a, you, if you have experience in those kinds of churches, you will find, again, Sola Scriptura is not their base. It is, well, I, God said this, and, and I experienced this, and so then I go to the Scripture and I interpret the Scripture by my in, by my feelings, mm -hmm. which is back to that same neo-orthodox thing. I think we do find it, it comes out of the Jesus movement, and people, the good thing is, here's the positive side of it, they wanted to be closer to God and experience God, and, and the Lord, of course, wants a relationship with us. However, God has prescribed methods by which we have relationships with him by telling us, much like if you go into a graveyard spiral, if you've ever been an airplane pilot and take your plane up, one of the things you do to pass your test is you have to take the plane completely up till it stalls. And it begins to fall to the earth, and you're trained to look at just the instruments because your feeling will tell you that you're on one level, but the, the instruments itself will tell you what's actually happening. And the only way to pull out of that is to trust those instruments. I'm saying that's what we need to do with the Bible. All experience has to be tested by Scripture, not the reverse. Yeah, and uh, I have to keep reminding myself that I should be defining terms regularly because uh, yeah. you never know uh, when people are listening who haven't heard previous programs. Sola Scriptura uh, was one of the battle cries of the Reformation, which basically meant uh, in Latin, Scripture alone. And what the Reformers meant by that was that Scripture was the uh, one and only infallible authority uh, in, in matters of doctrine and practice over the Church, correct? That's correct, and, and that's, that's a great thing to bring up because the Sola Scriptura aspect and, and the fact that the Bible alone, that's attacked by Rob Bell and Velvet Elvis. And the reason he attacks it is because if you're going to bring in the subjective mysticism, you have to kick out that, that doctrine. Mm -hmm. Because, again, the mystics were rejected by Luther and Calvin and the Reformers at that time. They rejected that whole quietist movement, Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross. They were contemporaries of people like uh, later Luther and, and uh, in Calvin's time, there was a move within the Catholic Church trying to use the mysticism to counter the Reformation. And the exact thing they were attacking was that very thing you just said, that the Bible interprets the Church. The Church does not interpret the Bible. 